I'm very happy to share with you today our latest results and to raise the question, are we looking for a wrong culprit in Lyme disease test? We have three major learning outcomes for this lecture. To describe the overall high expansion of undiagnosed Lyme disease cases worldwide and the possible link to screening only for Borrelia burgdorferi sensulato and rarely testing for Borrelia miomatoi. To identify the utilization of phage-based testing and bacterial presence as related to testing choices and late chronic stage patients. To discuss the overall high failure rate of tick-borne infections related testing underscores the necessity for novel approaches. The goals of these contributions are multiple. First, to bring the focus on the importance to enlarge Borreliosis-related testing targets, but not testing only for Borrelia burgdorferi sensulato. To present the importance of novel testing approaches, and to emphasize the importance of testing the ticks, remote ticks, and shed some light on high prevalence of Borrelia miyamotoi presence both in text and late-stage undiagnosed patients. Tick-borne diseases which afflict humans and other animals are caused by infectious agents transmitted mainly by tick bites. Tick-borne illnesses are caused by infection with a variety of pathogens. Because individual ticks can harbor more than one pathogen, patients can be infected with more than one pathogen at the same time compounding the difficulty in diagnosis and treatment. Tick-borne infections are increasing globally. Lyme disease is among the most prevalent vector-borne infection in the US and Europe. Thus, whenever possible, get the tick tested. Check yourself after having a walk in the nature and look for the tick. If you spot one, remove it properly and send it for testing. In this work, we tested the ticks we received from patients who removed from them or their children or their pets and from veterinary doctors. The whole ticks were mechanically greeted with glass beads and DNA extracted by phenylchlorophyll manual method. The extracted DNA was then analyzed by two different methods. The first one is hybrid tick borne bacteria flow chip that enables simultaneous detection of seven tick-borne bacteria genera, Rickettsia, Ehrlichia, Anaplasma, Francisella, Bertonella, Borrelia, and Coxiella. This technique relies on the use of PCRs and dot blot hybridization on a membrane where every target is spotted twice on different places. The second method we used for analyzing the tick DNA are Felix Phage Borrelia tests that analyze the DNA by three different real-time PCRs for different Borrelia strains. It's only Borrelia test. Bacteriophage could become a diagnostic tool based on the principle that if there is phages, it is because they are living bacteria. Felix Charity, together with Leicester University Microbiology Department, have recently developed a Borrelia phage-based PCR test searching for three major Borrelia groups, Borrelia burgdorferi sensulato, Borrelia miyamotoi, and relapsing fever group. This method is efficiently used to test both human samples and text. It's highly sensitive and specific, do not generate positive signal against other bacterial strains, and fast positives are ruled out by sequencing. The efficiency was estimated by spiking human blood with known amount of Borrelia cultures. The test starts with a biological material that is usually blood sample, but could be also tick, urine, or cerebrospinal fluid. The DNA from the submitted sample is extracted by phenylchloric form extraction. This is a very critical step in this testing because other approaches for DNA extraction, either based on use of beads or colons, do not give 
satisfactory results. This manual phenyl chlorophore extraction emerged as the very best method to recover phage DNA. This DNA that is then analyzed by three different real-time PCRs, detecting Borrelia burgdorferi sensulata, Borrelia miyamotoi, and relapsing fever group. When a positive signal is obtained on RT-PCR, those samples are then sent for sequencing to rule out false positive results. The ticks we received showed following results. 40% of analyzed ticks were negative, no detected pathogens, and 60% of analyzed ticks were positive for at least one pathogen. Hebrispo technique enabled us to see that no rickettsia was detected, no Ehrlichia, no anaplasma, no Francisella, no Bertonellia, but 50% of analyzed ticks were positive for Borrelia, Borrelia burgdorferi in this case, and no Coxiella was detected. No, none of the analyzed eggs bear coxiella. Felix phage Borrelia test revealed that following pathogens were found in positive ticks. Borrelia burgdorferi sensulata was found in 70% of positive ticks, while Borrelia miyamotoi, surprisingly, was found in 60% of positive ticks. And the relapsing fever group was detected in 23% of positive ticks. Furthermore, 25 positive ticks were for two pathogens. We were very much surprised with this very high rate of Borrelia miyamotoi and Borrelia relapsing fever phages in tested ticks, ticks that are mainly originating from Europe. Sixty, as I said, 60% of analyzed ticks were positive for at least one pathogen. Among them, only 70% were positive for Borrelia burgdorferi sensulato. And among positive ticks, 60% were for Borrelia miyamotoi. Furthermore, this unexpected result was in line with those obtained on human samples. Since one year, over 2,100 Patient samples originating from various countries have been obtained, and testing included mainly late stage or chronic patients, and the aggregated data are showing 30% of negative results and 70% positive, among which over 60% indicated the presence of specific Borrelia miyamotoi phages. With respect to obtained results, a question raised Are we looking for a wrong culprit in Lyme disease testing? When you look at the methods currently used for uncovered Lyme disease, in the first place there is antibody-based test, which give only indirect evidence, exposure, low sensitivity, some difficulties identifying Borrelia subtypes. Bacterial DNPCR method, which of course give direct evidence, but for late stage, is characterized by low sensitivity and can distinguish Lyme and dead Borrelia. LTT tests provide also indirect evidence, is characterized by variable sensitivity and have difficulties in identification of Borrelia subtypes. While phage tests bring the direct evidence of Borrelia presence and can distinguish between different subgroups and also, and very importantly, can distinguish between active and non-active Borrelia presence. Seeing a high prevalence of Borrelia miyamotoi in tested ticks, further supported by similar percentages found in tested patients, one can hypothesize that the high failure rate of current to tier testing, searching for Borrelia burgdorferi sensulata only, might be due to the wrong testing target. In other words, the overall high expansion of undiagnosed Lyme disease cases worldwide might be linked to the screening choice focusing only on Borrelia burgdorferi sensulata and only rarely testing for Borrelia miyamotoi, while the later one seems to be much more prevalent. Further accumulation of data from the patients and ticks should bring the answer to the questions are we searching for the wrong culprit? Searching for actual bacterial presence using phage-based testing might pacify the debate and controversies on testing choices and late chronic stage patients. 
thank you for your interest and your presence. If you want to know more about this testing, please look for an expanded presentation that is available on demand.